the cinnamon end to use a lilic and it means that we get a nice bright orange snag when we should actually have got a banana pewter. The cinnamon end to use a lilic Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Bowls. Uh, we're going to look at genetic identification. This time we're going to take the reverse approach to what I normally do when I identify hatchlings. I start with the parents. We're actually going to start with the hatchlings and allow the hatchlings to tell us what genes we see in the parents. So we're going to use the pastel spot nose yellow belly het for clown male and I'm also going to show you an allelic combination involving cinnamon and enchi. It's a pastel banana cinnamon enchi warmer. I think you'll find that one quite interesting too. So let's take a look. But this is my pastel spot nose yellow belly het for clown male and you can see in the little sidebar what he looked like when he was young. I know how much you guys like to compare snakes, what we look for in snakes to recognize the genetics so I'm going to use this snake as an example of identifying genes. So we're going to focus on pastel spot nose and yellow belly. Everybody knows what pastel looks like. It's the brightening gene that gives the animal uh, also a washed out head stamp as we can see in this particular case. I think most people will be able to recognize pastel but beyond that you saw three snakes from the same clutch at the start of this little segment all of which had spot nose in them and when you look at the babies all side by side it actually becomes very easy to see which are the much more busier patterned spot noses and you can see in this guy here also the typical spot nose templates that we look for in spot nose unfortunately for us pastel washes out the head stamp and I know what you're thinking you're thinking well I'm, I'm not the wiser I don't see it typically when I identify genes in hatchlings I start with the parents and we allow the parents and the theoretical genetic combinations to tell us what the babies are. Let's do it the other way around. Let's allow the babies to tell us what's in the adult snakes. So the first snake I'm going to show you is the father to this guy. I'm going to keep him in the tub because he's a bit flighty but I'm going to put Sun alongside him and I think you can see immediately that Sun is absolutely identical to father. So even if we don't know what the genes are, we can see characteristics in both these snakes that let us know that we're dealing with exactly the same snake. So dad is also a pastel spot nose yellow belly. The only difference is that his son is het for clown. You can see the typical bow ties along the back of father and the bow ties along the back of son. Now uh, that is another one of the features of spot nose. The tail here with these bell shapes on both father and son. Again, let us know that there is spot nose in this, even if the head stamps are not the typical spot nose head stamp. Father, you can see, does have a spot on his nose. Even comparing father to son, we're none the wiser as to what's actually in these snakes. So over the last two seasons I've paired father to two different snakes and we're going to let his offspring tell us what father is. And clearly son is exactly the same, so whatever father is, son is as well. I think we can quite clearly see pastel. The only thing that we're struggling with is spot nose and yellow belly. So let's take a look. Obviously I have been pairing father to snakes that do not contain spot nose and yellow belly so wherever we see spot nose and yellow belly must have come from the dad and that really is confirmation that dad is spot nose and yellow belly. So this is one of his offspring from last year and the mother of this snake was a pastave vanilla so we added vanilla 
we added Mojave and Pastel. So a lot of the offspring are Pastel, but this snake does not have Mojave and does not have Vanilla. This is a spot nose yellow belly and it's much much easier to see the characteristics of both of these genes in this single snake and we know because spot nose and yellow belly is not present in the mum that both of these genes came from father. Here is the typical spot nose head stamp. Nobody can mistake that. That is spot nose all day long. You can see also in this snake the typical template like alien heads, very very regular alien heads and the yellow belly is expressed, believe it or not, not by a yellow belly but by a yellow edging with these digital pixelated patterns down the side. Yellow belly also produces these flames at the side of the snake here and yellow belly also gives us this enhanced and very bright dorsal. So we have spot nose yellow belly and this clearly must have come from dad. So we can recognize spot nose and yellow belly as coming from dad even if dad doesn't look like this. His offspring do and they could not have come from the mum. When we look at these two guys together, how on earth do we get from this snake to this snake just by adding pastel? That doesn't make any sense at all. Pastel completely changes the appearance of the snake. You can see spot nose and yellow belly in this guy. You can Convince yourself that this guy is yellow belly, but it's not definitive. Spot nose, there's no head stamp. And the pattern, well, that could just be pastel, couldn't it? So I have to put these two guys in a tub together so that you can see because they're very squirrely. So, spot nose, yellow belly, no doubt from the father. So this guy here looks like, yes. A carbon copy of dad, pastel spot nose yellow belly, but how on earth do we get from spot nose yellow belly to this guy here who looks nothing like that? We've got spot nose yellow belly, this is spot nose pastel, and this is not from the same parents, but it's just an illustration. I want to show you what effect that pastel has. So when you add pastel to this guy, we were wondering how on earth you make. A snake that looks like dad. So let's have a look at the pastel spot nose. You can see the typical regular template like alien heads, the very strong dorsal. Pastel has changed completely the head stamp. Pastel also influences the pattern quite strongly. You will see that the alien heads are much more pronounced on this guy than they were in the spot nose yellow belly. And we've also got these dots along the dorsal and it's pastel that's doing that. Pastel has a severe influence on spot nose. So if we combine these two snakes, spot nose yellow belly, spot nose pastel, let's combine them and that's what we end up with. So this is my pastel spot nose yellow belly. I think everybody is familiar with the Batman which is the leopard spot nose clown and let me just give you a heads up pastel ruins the Batman. Pastel is such a strong pattern influencer when combined with spot nose that it actually spoils the look of the Batman. We need to be very very careful with what genes we mix with what in order to get the outcome that we want. So you can see from this guy here pastel spot nose changes the look of the snake almost totally and that's the reason why the pastel spot nose yellow belly is very very hard to ID the individual genes. So in this particular case we've allowed the offspring to tell us what the parent is. It also shows us when we 
produce offspring from that combination, how those genes present themselves and what they look like in certain combinations. This is not guesswork, this is theoretical genetic possibilities and then identifying the genes within the snakes themselves and we can either use the parents to tell us what the offspring are or we can use the offspring to tell us what the parents are. I did just want to show this snake as well. This is another one of father's original offspring. There is no spot nose in this but this is a perfect illustration of vanilla from mum and yellow belly from dad. When you combine vanilla and yellow belly this also has pastel. Again we can identify pastel from the head stamp but you'll see the head stamp is very very blushed because pastel and vanilla together give us this very blushed head stamp. Yellow belly in this snake stands out a mile. You can see the flames coming up the sides and you can see the awesome digital pixelated pattern on the belly and that is because of the influence of vanilla. Vanilla is one of those genes that adds richness and brightness to most snakes but does not influence the pattern unless you mix it with something which is a lelic. Vanilla tends to go unnoticed but it is vanilla that is making this pastel yellow belly so bright compared to the other snakes that we've seen. So you can see yellow belly stands out a mile in this snake because it is enhanced by the vanilla. And you can so this boy is my banana pastel cinnamon enchi warmer and you can see from the sidebar what he looked like when he was younger and now you can still see the amazing orange colours on his sides very very clean uh, not many freckles so banana pastel cinnamon enchi warmer and I know you guys like the genetic side of things here so let's have some fun with this guy as well uh, there's a twist to the genetics in this snake so let me show you dad first of all so if I can just zoom out a little bit and show you dad dad is a banana pastel enchi warmer so this snake here the sun is exactly the same snake as dad with the addition of cinnamon and you can see the difference the enormous difference in the brightness and the color that cinnamon brings you can see that dad is very very clean he's the father of most of my banana offspring here and he produces very very clean offspring so this guy was paired to a cinnamon mojave uh, to produce this guy here and the twist to this is that we know that pastel cinnamon is pewter and if you produce a pastel cinnamon banana you produce a banana pewter which is a very pale washed out snake and I'll put that picture up on the screen so that you guys can see and you will see that this guy whilst he is pastel cinnamon banana is not at all washed out he's not really a pewter in fact the only indication that he has pastel cinnamon in him is the slightly greenish pattern on the dorsal and the reason that he isn't a banana pewter is because we have the cinnamon enchi combination in this snake and cinnamon enchi is allelic and you can see what that allelic relationship does first of all compared to dad we have this extremely bright dorsal stripe in the snake that was even more prominent when he was younger and what cinnamon and enchi do together is allow cinnamon and pastel to coexist without producing a pewter 
you can see that the glorious orange colours from the cinnamon that are lost in pastel cinnamon or pastel cinnamon bananas and we produce a pewter are retained because of the influence of that allelic combination between cinnamon and enchi. So this snake is extremely unusual in that it doesn't look like it should look with the genes that are contained in it and the reason it doesn't is because not only have we added cinnamon to dad to produce this really orange snake but cinnamon pastel doesn't react in the way that it normally would because we have enchi in this snake and cinnamon enchi is a lelic so that's the little twist behind my banana pastel cinnamon enchi warmer here let's just take a look at him again on his own I'll put that away so when we look at these animals there's always something new to learn about the interaction of the genes that go to make them up so that's the additional story and genetic twist behind this banana pastel cinnamon enchi warmer the cinnamon enchi is a lelic and it means that we get a nice bright orange snake when we should actually have got a banana pewter awesome okay guys i have been working on my allelic combination video another in my mr dna series how to manage als projects understanding and managing als projects that video is coming shortly uh, of all the projects that we do in many respects the allelic projects uh, where you're working with allelic combinations of genes are actually the most difficult to understand and the most difficult to manage so we're going to take a look at that in the next video now you've seen the approach where we look at a bunch of hatchlings and see how genes interact with each other ARP and myself have been working with orange dream combinations for the last two years uh, last year uh, we didn't produce very many but this year we've produced some awesome orange dream combinations and we've learnt an awful lot about how orange dream works what it looks like how to recognize it in various combinations and what genetic combinations work best with orange dream i'm going to get myself down to arp and i'm going to ask arrowin to talk to you guys about some of his od projects and how he thinks that orange dream can be used in those projects to produce some awesome looking snakes stay tuned for that okay guys there is plenty more to come i just had a clutch of eggs from the female behind me so my breeder series will continue as well with another video on how to stay focused during the breeding season uh, the breeding season is long and you must remain focused in order to be successful so we'll talk about that so thanks for watching don't forget to share, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.